hello and welcome back. I am so excited about today's episode because I just got something in that I've been waiting on for a while. I've been looking high and low for a piece of green formica. This is called bright green, which really it comes out to be like a lime green. I'm going to put this on the galley countertop in the teardrop. Um, when I built the thing three years ago, the teardrop uh, galley countertop was basically just a slab of wood that I put some spar urethane over. And it's done well. I mean, it's been water resistant. I've, I've not had any issues with it. But I really want the galley to pop. And you know me, I like green. You look at the fenders on the Camp Easy, you look at the, uh, the artwork on the side of it, it's all green. Heck, I'm even building a new radio controlled airplane here in the shop, and it's green as well. So, green's my color, and we're going to add a little bit more to the Camp Easy today. So, I want to unwrap this thing, and I haven't yet. I don't know what shape it's going to take. I don't know if it's going to like spring to life and knock the camera over or what's going to happen here. But, but anyway, this, this is pretty stiff material. We're all going to see this together. Here we go. All right, it's been cut. Oh, I feel like I'm trying to open already. I might as well just let it go. Well, that wasn't too bad. I could not buy a smaller sheet, so I went ahead and I got a, I guess this is a four by eight sheet of it. So I'll have enough to do the galley countertop and well, heck, anything else I'd want to. I don't know that I have another purpose for it right now, but my goodness, this looks good. Um, I don't know, might be cool to put this on the cabinet doors inside the bedroom, maybe on the, the middle panel of the cabinet door. That might be a nice touch. And I don't know if this is heat resistant or not. Um, I don't know if I can put a hot skillet down on this thing. I probably won't try. But I do feel, though, that this is going to give me a level of protection that just a bare piece of wood with some spar urethane on it wouldn't. So, yeah, let's get this dude going. Oh, you smell that? Oh, that's the smell of a new sheet of green for mica. Oh, I love it. So the first thing I need to do is start taking hardware apart to get this thing out. And, and the reason why I want to take it out is that I want to be able to run kind of a rough to medium grit sandpaper over this to really scuff it up. I'm going to use contact cement to put the formica down and I want to make sure I get good adhesion. So I'm going to scratch it up a little bit. Now as far as taking it out, well, I think I've got a visitor here. Cleo, what are you doing little girl? Hmm? You want to be in the video? Anyway, I think I just need to take this piece of aluminum trim out and the whole thing is just, it's floating. Uh, I will have to take the sink out obviously, but I don't think I have the countertop fastened anywhere else around the perimeter and it's just slid underneath this. So this should be a, a pretty easy uninstall. Oh, and just a quick update. Somebody asked me earlier this afternoon, I sent me a message about my galley struts, if they've been holding up well. Uh, the short answer is yes. I've had the galley struts on there for three years and they work really well, but this is a different set I just put on there. Uh, when I first put the first set on there, they worked great, but I didn't plan on putting this aluminum skin on the inside. When I did, it made the hatch just a little heavier and it's worked okay, but I decided it was time to upgrade. So I got some uh, struts that were about 20 pounds heavier and they work magnificent. So it looks like there's a screw on the end right in front of this strut. I'm gonna have to go get a longer screwdriver. There we go. I don't get to use this screwdriver bit often, but when I do, there's nothing else that'll do the job.
So the thought occurred to me when I'm putting down this green for mica on the countertop, I could very well plug this hole where the sink is um, and just make a solid countertop all the way across so I could have, you know, increased storage space. And I talked to Joanne about that. I said, listen, you know, do we, do we use the sink enough to really justify having it? Or would we rather have the counter space? Because, you know, I've read a lot of people on the, the teardrop groups on Facebook. You know, some are very strong advocates for a sink and others say, no, it's just a waste of space. So what we decided to do is we're gonna compromise. I'm gonna cut a plug out of wood that will fit just inside this sink. And I'm gonna cover it with green formica as well. And I'll probably just make some kind of finger hole in there. So if I don't wanna use the sink, I've got increased counter space. Um, and if I do want to sink, I just pop it out. Now, yeah, I will have a faucet in the way, but really and true, that faucet ain't going to take up too much room. And how can I get rid of a green faucet? I'm out here recording video. Say hi to everybody. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I ruined your taste. No, no, I actually hadn't started the camera yet. I just thought I'd turn it on just to aggravate you. I'm taking the countertop out. And, uh, going pretty good and I think it'll look good with that Formica on there. Well good. Yeah. So, I haven't even seen what it looks. I haven't even seen the color of it. It's it's awesome. When you get home, uh, run out to the shop and I'll show it to you. Okay. All right. So I'm going to try to pry this sink up just a little bit here just to make sure I can break it loose. I don't want to damage the sink and I'm not worried about damaging the wood because I'm going to cover it up. So I'm going to put some pretty good pressure down on that. Maybe gouge the wood a little bit and just barely try to get under that sink. Oh, that's, look at that. That's not going to be bad at all. Great. That's one. I'm not even going to have to undo that clamp on the bottom. Check it out. I have used butyl tape all over this camper and it's done a very, very nice job. Um, now, if it seems like it wasn't holding all that tight, I used a very, very thin strip of butyl tape and I scored it back to where it's barely touching the bowl. I really didn't think water was going to get under anyway, but, but I made it a very close tolerance so it wasn't just laying in gobs of it. But the butyl tape I've used, I've tried from a couple different places. Um, I tried some stuff from Camping World and some butyl tape from Vintage Technologies. And the stuff from Vintage Technologies is really good. It's very, very uh, drippy and goopy, if you will. Look at this. That's three years later. Tell me that's not going to make a good seal. Now, I'm not sponsored by Vintage Technologies. I just happen to believe in this product, so I wanted to pass it along. So let's take a look inside and see what I've got to do. It looks like the faucet is, the stem of it is screwed into this brass coupling here. And I put some Teflon tape, and then there's a, a ring, just finger tight, that just holds the faucet down. So I need to take this apart, and the faucet should lift right out. So I've got the front of the camper jacked way up where I pulled it off the hitch, and that makes the back of it down below head level. And silly me, I haven't raised it back up yet. I just walked into it. Look here, I just rung my bell. It's not bleeding, I don't think, but man, that hurt. I remember when I was looking for a green faucet, I literally just went to eBay and I typed in green faucet and this thing like popped right up on the first page of results. It was like six or seven dollars, I think. And I bought it and I have absolutely loved this little thing. Yeah. There we go. So like I say, it's been three years since I built this thing, I hope. I just put down these uh, quarter inch staples and I did not glue it. If I glued it, it's gonna be a little bit rougher to take apart. Might even actually have to cut this thing up and just cut out a new piece of wood. I hope not, um, but we'll see. What I'd like to do is go up from underneath and just knock it up, you know, upwards. See if I can get it to break loose. Yeah, that's at least gonna take a rubber mallet. All right, judging by my sweat, it's almost 90 degrees out here. It's pretty hot. I've done about all I can do uh, as far as taking all the hardware off. I, I guess now what I need to do is go in the house and watch my old videos and see if I can remember whether I glued this thing or not. So let's call it a night. All 
So my plan is to take a screwdriver and stick it in between the countertop and the top of this ledge right here. Try to pry it up just a little bit. And I'm gonna take my oscillating tool, go in there and cut that staple. I think that'll work. wires in this little feller. Look at that. There's a wire right there that I've got running down or running up, I guess, from the um, tail lights up to my third brake light. I think that's what that is. It's been a while since I've looked in here, about three years. So I'm going to have to I guess I'm going to have to cut that wire and then splice it back when I'm done. So let me give you a better idea what I'm talking about. I've got the tail lights on the left and right. I've got a marker light in the middle. And what I've done is I've run the wire from the bottom of the trailer inside this cabinet here. It goes up, goes across the inside of that cabinet. It goes in behind this drawer. It comes up in this junction box or this switch box. It comes up into this cabinet, into this uh, harness that I've made. It exits in this conduit into the galley hatch. And I did all that just so that I could have a third brake light. I don't have my wire snippers with me. I'm gonna see if I can just cut it with this utility knife. I hate this. I absolutely hate cutting into perfectly good wiring. It kills me. But, do what you gotta do. All right, it's done. No turning back. Fast forward a little bit to save you all the noise of this beaver tail, I call it. I went ahead and just cut the front of the sink here in the back of the sink here because it was such a tight fit between the left wall and the right wall. I really couldn't pull it out. So now I should be able to lift the halves out. There we go. Make easy work of it. Okay, that wire's been cut. Now let's see if this thinking thing will come out. Oh, oh finally. Yes. And we are back in the shop. So, this thing ended up, it was long enough that it was pressing against the two walls of the galley, and there was too much friction for me to be able to pull it out, so I had to cut it down the middle, but that's fine. When I glue it back together and let it set tonight, um, I'll come back and put that uh, for mic on it tomorrow. You won't be able to see the seam, and when I put it back in the teardrop, there's a frame all the way around underneath that it'll be resting on, so it's not a structural issue. Should be just fine. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna trim about a sixteenth of an inch off each end here, just so it'll be a little bit shorter and not have any problems going back in as a single piece. Um, and if there's a little bit of a gap at the end, not a problem, I'll just put a piece of trim on each end up against the wall. So let's get this butyl tape off. And um, yeah, the little staples are sticking out the bottom. Need to clean those up and get this thing put back together. And hey, while I'm working and getting this cleaned up, um, if you have watched the channel before, you know that there's a state park in Middle Tennessee that we really enjoy. It's the Edgar Evans State Park. And last year we had a teardrop gathering called Camping on a Porch. We're gonna be doing that again at the end of October, uh, the weekend of Halloween. And if you wanna join us in that, go to the DIY Teardrop Campers Community. Uh, Facebook group and in the event section you'll see all the information about that. Hope to see you there. I don't want the wood glue sticking 
to my table. So I'm just going to take a couple pieces of wax paper, slide underneath the where the joint is going to be. There we go. And then I'll slide the other piece on there and clamp it. There we go. Now I'm going to push that down and I'm going to wrap the wax paper around it. And I'm going to put some weight on there to hold it all down. Now that the formica is positioned and clamped to the countertop, I'm going to take some packing tape and make some hinges, if you will, to put on the back. I'm just going to pull it real tight. And my hope is that I can take these clamps off and I can use this tape as a hinge just to flip this thing up, put the contact cement on it, flip it back over, and it'll be in place. I don't know if that'll work, but we're certainly going to try it. Turn him back now. You are supposed to use a laminate roller to properly embed this Formica on the wood. And I don't have one. I looked all over for one. The only ones I could find were terribly expensive. So I took a couple of these foam model airplane wheels that I use, these are large ones, and I put a peg from a pegboard on there and I've made a foam roller. So let's just try this. See if we can embed the Formica glue with this. Okay, so we have the Formica countertop now glued to the wood, and really the only thing to do is put it back in the camper. Um, and all I'm going to be doing is just a reverse of the disassembly. No need to put you through that. So let's just jump to the big reveal. All right, y'all, so there it is. A little bit more green on the Camp Easy Teardrop. I think it's just perfect. Um, I am gonna put adhesive caulk around it just to, just to seal up the edges. And I'm gonna put some Formica over a round piece of wood that'll go inside the sink. And that'll make more countertop space when I'm not using the sink. So believe it or not, I don't wanna put too much green on this thing, but I really believe this countertop looks better with it. I'm so happy about it. So, hey, I'll show you that sink plug on the next episode. I should have that done. And I'm probably going to go ahead and put some on the side table as well. So, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope it'll inspire you to get out there, build your own camper. If you've already got one, you know, make some upgrades to it. Teardrop life is, is awesome. The people you're going to meet, the time, good times you're going to have. So, hey, if you like this episode, give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. And until next time, take care. We'll see you on the road. Thank you.